الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله واتوب اليك اما بعد seeking forgiveness from your lord subhanahu wa ta'ala the one who created you is a way that we raise our our level our levels of obedience and we remove some of the sins by begging allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us and there are so many benefits and we are all in need of seeking forgiveness from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Kullu ibn Adam khata wa khayran khata'in atawabun," that all the children of Adam, they make, they commit sins, and the best from amongst those is those who make repentance to Allah subhanahu wa taala. And in a hadith, An Shidad ibn Aws radiyallahu taala anhu, an Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam qal. سيد الاستغفار أن يقول العبد اللهم أنت ربي لا إله إلا أنت خلقتني وأنا عبدك وأنا على عهدك ووعدك ما استطعت أعوذ بك من شر ما سنعت أبوء لك بنعمتك عليه وأبوء بذنبي فاغفر لي فإنه لا يغفر الذنوب إلا أنت ومن قالها من النهار مكن بها فمات من يومه قبل أن يمسي فهو من أهل الجنة ومن قالها من الليل وهو مكن بها فمات قبل أن يصبح فهو من أهل الجنة رواه بخاري وأحمد In this hadith narration that was narrated by Shidad ibn Aws radiyallahu anhu and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam aqal the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the pinnacle of seeking forgiveness is that when or, or, or the one who is like the has reached a, a, a great level or greatest level in seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the slave that is that is the one that says O oh Allah you're my Lord there is no God worthy of worship except you you created me and I am your slave and I am and I acknowledge and am trying to fulfill my promise to you and hopeful for your reward as much as I'm able to and I seek refuge in you from evil the evil that I've done and I am aware of your favors that you have blessed me with and I am aware of my sins so please forgive me for verily there is no one who forgives sins except you and whoever says this during the day with sincerity or certainty with certainty in their heart and then they die during the during the during the day before the evening then they will be from the people of paradise and whoever says it during the evening with complete certainty of its meaning and, and that it's that it's true that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you and then they die before the morning then they will be from the people of paradise and this was collected in Bukhari and Ahmed some of the benefits we gain from this hadith is that and this supplication is that it is a condition for seeking forgiveness to have a correct intention and 
being sincere and doing it, seeking forgiveness for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and having the proper mannerisms for doing so. Also we learn from this hadith that it also verifies that Allah is the only one worthy of worship, His uluhiya, and that He is also the creator of the heavens and earth. He's the, he's the creator of all, of, of all things. And also it is an acknowledgement, this hadith, of the contract, so to speak, that we have taken with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to worship Him and Him alone, which is a part of His right over us. So fulfilling that right is something we should strive to do. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنُّ وَلَا إِنْتِ عَبْدُونَ That I have not created mankind in the jinn except for the purpose of, me, of worshipping me. And also that was mentioned in the hadith of Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala anhu who asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him Ya Mu'adh tadri ma haqq Allah ala ibadi wa ma haqq al ibadi ala Allah He said, O Mu'adh, do you know the right of the servant? Do you know the right of Allah over his servant and the right of the servant over Allah? And he said, Allah and his messenger know best. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, حَقَ اللَّهَ لِبَادِي يَعْبُدُوهُ وَلَا يُشْرِكُوا بِي شَيْنٍ وَحَقَ لِبَادِي عَلَى اللَّهَ لَا يُعَذَّبَ مِنْ لَا يُشْرِكُوا بِي شَيْنٍ So the Prophet ﷺ responded by saying, The right of Allah is that you worship Him alone and you do not associate any partners with Him. And the right of the slave over Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that he will not be punished if he only worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. So again, this verifies for us that purpose, that divine purpose, and that contract we have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is to worship Him in Him alone. Also, it, it, this hadith shows us that we should have hope for the uh, reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised the believers, those people who seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and worship Him and Him alone. And also that we should seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from our own evil selves, and from the evil of others. And that we should be aware and thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for His many blessings. And that we should seek forgiveness and be hopeful for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness uh, for our many sins. And there are many other uh, benefits from this hadith and from this supplication. And I ask Allah the Almighty to forgive us of our sins and bless us with good, bless us with good in this life as well as the hereafter. And bless us to be of the inhabitants of Jannah to Fardos. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.